If you've been paying attention to the crypto world lately, you know it's been a wild ride. Just last week, the infamous Hack2 girl allegedly pulled off a massive crypto rock pool, scamming victims out of millions of dollars. And with crypto trading at sky high values right now, the hype is through the roof. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. But there's a problem. With hype comes scammers and hackers, and lots of them. We got YouTubers like CoffeeZilla, Oompaville, and Mudahar exposing crypto scams and rock pulls left and right. But we're not here to cover the drama. Well, maybe a little bit. Hawk to and spit on that. But our job is to go deeper, way deeper. We're going to dissect one of the most popular and effective crypto stealing attacks in the wild. Clipboard hijacking. This is an attack that is so simple yet devastating that it'll make you question everything you ever copy and pasted on your keyboard. This proof of concept will demonstrate the attack in a controlled environment. Real world malware is far more advanced, almost never written in Python, and it's heavily obfuscated to avoid detection. But Python is perfect for our learning experience because it's simple, readable, and gets the job done. So let's get right into it. This video is sponsored by my cybersecurity company, Rhino Cybersecurity. If your business is connected to the internet in any way, then your business is vulnerable. That's exactly where we, the cybersecurity specialists, come in. And that's why I'd like to offer you a free consultation with me and the Rhino team. We'll do a comprehensive assessment of your business's vulnerability status. Click on the calendar link in the description of this video and let's work on your business. Let's face it, cryptocurrency wallet addresses are a nightmare. They're long, confusing strings with random characters. So what does everybody do? They copy and paste. So clipboard hijackers know this and they exploit it without any limits. So here's how it works. You copy a wallet address intending to transfer funds, for example. Then the malware silently replaces the wallet address in your clipboard with the attacker's address. And then when you paste the address and hit send, boom. The funds are gone. They're sent to a different address, not yours. It's a numbers game. Scammers inject the malware into as many systems as possible, hoping for a few successful transfers. When crypto is trading at $100,000 for one Bitcoin, even a small transfer can net attackers thousands. Before we dive into the demo, let me clarify something. This isn't a real malware. The script we are about to create is a simplified version stripped of any complexity or stealth for that matter. Real world malware operates a little differently at the OS level. It hooks into system processes. It uses advanced obfuscation techniques to stay hidden. But for our purposes, this POC or proof of concept will help you understand the core mechanics of a clipboard hijack attack. Now let's roll up our sleeves and let's get started. For this hack, make sure you have Python installed. If you don't have it, just go to the python.org website, download it and install it. All right, so this is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to set up the necessary libraries for the script. We are working with Python, so we'll add a library called Piperclip. Now Piperclip is going to allow us to interact with the clipboard. That means that we can read whatever the user copies and also override it with something else. Next, we're going to import the time module. So import time. This is used to add a small delay in our loop so that we're not hammering the clipboard every millisecond. So we need to have a little bit of time in there. After that, we're going to bring in the famous re or regular expressions library from Python. So import RE. Why do we do this? Well, because we need to identify the cryptocurrency wallet addresses in the clipboard. So we don't want to replace or look for everything. We only want the addresses. See, wallet addresses follow specific patterns and regular expressions help us define those patterns. Next, we're going to define a fake wallet address that will replace a valid wallet address copied by the user. So in this case, uh, I'm going to do fake wallet equals, and then in quotes, I'm going to put a fake wallet address in here. This is the malicious part of the script. When someone copies a legitimate wallet address, our script will swap it out and use the fake one instead. So then we create the regular expression pattern, right? So here's where things get a little more technical. Don't worry, stay with me. We define a regular expression pattern to match the wallet address. So we're going to do wallet underscore pattern equals to the recompile, and then we're going to throw in our regular expression. 
So let me break it down for you. So 13, 13 is the Bitcoin address, which is usually starts with one or three. Then we have in brackets A, K, M, and the rest of the letters and numbers, which match 25 to 34 characters. This excludes certain characters, like for example, zero or O or capital I or small L to avoid confusion. Now let's start monitoring the clipboard. This is where the magic happens. First, we are going to let the user know that the script is active. So I'm going to throw a print statement on the terminal that uh, produces a monitoring uh, for clipper activity, right? So then we enter an infinite loop to constantly check the clipboard. So this is the while true. In the loop, we're going to be uh, grabbing the current clipboard content using the Piper clip paste. This function reads whatever is currently in the clipboard. It matches our regular expression for wallet addresses. We know the user has copied something we want to target, right? Then we're going to detect and replace the wallet address. So in this case, I'm going to throw an if statement. So if wallet pattern matches the clipboard content, then we're going to print uh, a statement on the terminal. So detect wallet address and then the clipboard content and then print another one, which is replacing with the fake wallet address. So we know that it's replacing. And then we throw in the Piper clip copy fake wallet. So fake wallet is our variable that states the uh, fake wallet address. The script prints the detected address. It logs uh, that is replacing it, right, with a fake address and then overrides the clipboard with the fake wallet using the Piper clip copy method. This ensures that when the user pays, they'll paste the fake wallet address instead of the original one, right? So then we're going to add a delay. To avoid overloading the system, we are going to add a small delay. So we're checking the clipboard every one second. And at the very end, we handle some errors uh, gracefully. So here is where we do the accept keyboard interrupt. So if the user processes control C, then the script is going to finish and prints out a message. And then for any other errors, we're going to print an error message without crashing. That is the exception as E. So this is how the script operates line by line. Now let's run the script and see what happens. All right, so this is where my file is located. The first step is going to be to create a clean Python environment. So this is going to ensure that we don't run into conflicts with other libraries on our system. So let's create a virtual environment for Python, Python 3-m venv venv. Once the environment is created, let's activate it. So on Linux and Mac, we're going to type in source venv slash bin slash activate. On Windows, of course, we're going to do venv backslash scripts, backslash activate. Now that the environment is created, then we're going to install the only one library that we are using, which is Piperclip. So let's do a pip install Piperclip there. All we have to do now is run the script. So in this case, which is just type in Python clipboard underscore hijacker dot py. We will see this message monitoring clipboard for cryptocurrency wallet addresses. And now that is the listener. I have set up a small interface. So this is my interface. So I'm going to be running Python server. So uh, Python 3-m HTTP dot server at uh, port uh, 8000. And then I'm going to go into localhost. Then I'm just going to go into my browser and type in localhost colon 8000. And there is the little interface. I have this wallet address here, so which I'm going to copy. So you can see that I'm copying it. And then I go into the interface. I'm going to set up the value. In this case, it's going to be 0 0.97 Bitcoin. And then I'm going to right click and paste. And then I'm going to click on transfer. As you can see, the transfer was successful. And here is the amount that I sent. But look at the recipient's address. It's completely different from my address. I mean, Every time I copy any of these addresses that match the regular expression of the crypto address, whether it is Ethereum or Bitcoin, then it's going to paste the hacker's address. This attack works because clipboard hijacking is a low-tech yet highly effective technique. 
It doesn't rely on complex command and control or C2 infrastructure, avoiding any network activity that might trigger intrusion detection systems or IDS or set off indicators of compromise for security teams, for example. Instead, it operates silently, leveraging local clipboard monitoring, which is a perfectly legitimate system function. What makes this attack so dangerous is its simplicity. The entire operation can be carried out in just a few lines of code, yet it's capable of rendering large sums of crypto to an attacker's wallet without raising any suspicion. The victim's workflow, so copying and pasting, is so routine that people rarely suspect malicious activity. So before confirming any transaction of any kind, double check that the wallet address you pasted matches the one that you intend to use. Opt for cryptocurrency wallets that will have built-in address verification or warning mechanisms for clipboard paste content, for example. Avoid using untrusted software or extensions, especially those promising utility for clipboard or crypto management, for example. Lastly, make sure that you have advanced security solutions that monitor unusual clipboard activity that can alert or block such attacks. Hey guys, subscribe to this channel. Make sure you like this video. Put some comments if you want to interact with me. Join our Discord channel as well as uh, go to my site and sign up for our newsletter. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.